Let me tell you, one of the best features that this RTX HDR has is this middle grace slider, okay? Every time you try to increase the visibility or the overall brightness of a game using any kind of settings, either the native HDR or reshade, you're definitely running the risk to wash out the colors, okay, and just ruin the picture quality. It is very difficult to increase the visibility and still get a great uh, picture quality. This is one of the best ways I've ever seen on any settings, on any reshade, any game. It's fantastic to increase the brightness, the auto brightness of the game. So if you just like a brighter picture, maybe you are playing on a bright room or just, just enjoy that, there you go. This is absolutely amazing. Now for me, I definitely want to use this for BFI on my LG C1 OLED. So I'm gonna share with you the ultimate RTX HDR settings for OLED Motion Pro on this LG C1. And I've been playing with this, as you can see here, Lies of P, and I am so happy with the picture quality. This is absolutely amazing. So now, I'm gonna show you the settings I have on RTX HDR and the TV settings. I, mean, I have a lot of it. So I have been fine tuning the experience to get you know, the picture that I want, okay? So you can give this a try, OLED Motion Pro High 120. This game runs like a dream. This is Lies of P. The performance is absolutely amazing. Fantastic game. This is a 10 out of 10. I highly recommend you. If you like Souls-like, I mean, it's, it's a must. So this is OLED Motion Pro High. Now, here are the settings I'm using on this RTX HDR. I increased this middle grace to 100%. Okay, so as much brightness as we can, and this is also going to give us more visibility near black, but the blacks are perfect. Let's take a look at it. Let me show you the HDR analysis tool here. Look, the blacks are perfect. So now this HDR analysis tool is not reading correctly the peak brightness because this is still SDR to HDR conversion, but the blacks, they it does read the blacks perfect and you have perfect blacks all the time so yes <laughs> that's definitely a needed uh, quality you need perfect blacks for the best picture quality whether you have an OLED or an LCD it doesn't matter you don't want to reduce the contrast of your display uh, you know when having raised blacks so this is this is absolutely amazing so now let me show you the settings I am using on the TV itself. It was All Motion Pro High 120 and Dynamic Tone Mapping. As you can see here, Dynamic Tone Mapping. And then I'm using this Master in Peak Max CLL in 540 just in case because I cannot read the peak brightness accurately. I could select here 400 because I selected 400 on the RTX HDR, but just in case, because I'm increasing the mid-tone so much, maybe the Max CLL is gonna be more than 400, so I don't wanna run the risk of getting some clipping. So now you might think, why are you reducing the peak brightness here uh, on RTX HDR? Why are you doing that? Um, if you can you know, just use dynamic tone mapping at 1000 nits, and the reason is, I don't want to get clipping, okay? And dynamic tone mapping has the tendency to just clip a little bit the highlights. And really, this is just SDR. We're not getting more information. And I do not need more brightness here because dynamic tone mapping is going to try to give you, you know, the brightest picture it can all the time. You don't want to use energy in trying to push brightness on highlights because you're using BFI, you're losing brightness anyway. You just want to get the closest to a non-BFI picture. Okay, You want to get the closest to an SDR, to an accurate SDR picture, Okay, which with just top colors that HDR is going to give you. So this is the best compromise, in my opinion, 
That's why I reduce this peak brightness to the minimum, okay? And what I did was basically just increase this peak brightness and look at the highlights until I realized, okay, well, this is the best option. If I increase this more and then I do the dynamic tone mapping with a higher um, target, I'm getting clipping on the highlights for no reason. This is giving me, this is preserving the details on the highlights for me and it's giving me the the brightest overall picture so it looks like there is no black frame insertion at all this is this looks absolutely amazing and of course my camera cannot capture you know exactly what i see in front of me there's no way the camera is always going to be clipping the um, you know the the darkness you're not going to see on the darkness and the, the highlights are going to be uh clipping too but you know rely on my description this looks like there was no black from insertion at all it looks like sdr basically this looks like sdr and probably even brighter okay even brighter than accurate sdr and of course the colors are juiced up okay the colors are more than is are going beyond rec 709 which is what i want this is definitely what i want i definitely want to get a more colorful uh, picture so now i go beyond that I go beyond that and I did a calibration. I did a two points and a 22 point calibration to increase the visibility near black. So now the in-game uh, slider is a default and it, it would be a lot easier to just come here. Let me get the hood. It would be a lot easier to just come here to your, gra to your game graphics, adjust brightness, come here to the brightness, just give it a click to the right. That's it. That would be a lot easier than what I did here on my TV. But the reason why I tried that, but I didn't, I was not 100% satisfied with that because when I increase this brightness, even just one click, I see that I'm clipping a little bit the highlights. Everything looks a little bit blown out. Okay. Um, let's say you are, you know, inside a, a church. There's like um, a church with a lot of windows where the light is coming in and it, it looks blown out and some rocks are bright and stuff it, it looks a little bit blown out if I do that so what I did to increase the visibility near black was to do this calibration and this is not accurate by any means uh, you can give it a try uh, or you can do your own calibration I use the color control no uh, the color temperature meter app color temperature meter app on my cell phone to do this calibration and I have some videos about it link in the description of the video so let me show you the calibration that I that I did here so again this is not accurate this is what I like and I'm sharing it with you I think this looks absolutely amazing I use warm 50 because I like a warm color temperature actually I like the warmest color temperature I can get and that's, this is why I not only use warm 50, I reduce the blue to the minimum I can. The blue lights to the minimum. Why? Because I like to play before going to sleep sometimes. And this is just so much better for my eyes. So accuracy for me doesn't matter. I like what my eyes you know, like. Okay? And that's why I do this. I reduce the blue now because I reduce the blue so much, I also have to reduce the green to keep a green to magenta balance that makes the picture look okay. okay. It doesn't look green or it doesn't look magenta. Okay, That's why I did this. Again, link in the description of the video so you see how I play around with these calibrations to do this. Uh, this in the test patterns that I use and everything uh, I share on those videos. So then I come here to the 22 point calibration. So now before I do that, on the two point calibration, I do not increase the visibility near black using this red, green, and blue because if I increase this here, I get raised blacks, okay? If I increase this past four for sure, I, I get raised blacks. So I cannot touch this low point, but I can touch these 22 points and that's what I do. So let me show you, I start here in the code value 496. So now for you to be able to 
to match, to have the same code values that I have here, you need to use the same master in pick max CLL 540, okay? Otherwise, it might say a different uh, value. But when I did this calibration, I, I didn't use dynamic tone mapping. I do the calibration with HGIG and with All Emotion Pro off, okay? So no black frame insertion, HGIG. And then after I do the calibration, then I change this and it automatically adjusts the, the values. So I think it would be better to show you the calibration with HGIG because that's what I did. So let me show you that. I'm gonna change this to HGIG and then I'm gonna show you the calibration. Then when you change it to dynamic top mapping, it, it will adjust uh, you know, automatically. You don't need to do anything. So as you can see here, I start at 496 on the 22 points, then 469, 002. So as you, as you saw, in 496, I just give it one click to the blue. Then 469, two clicks to the blue. So now the reason why you see that I am touching the blue is because I want to keep the same uh, color temperature across the entire grayscale. So with this mobile app, what I am doing is I am pointing the camera to the to screen with this app and I have a full white screen. Okay, I have basically the grayscale, the entire grayscale. And then that phone app is telling me the white balance. It's, it's telling me the color temperature of that um, white screen. Okay, and based on that color temperature and also based on a magenta to green balance, I am doing this calibration. So that, that measurement is not accurate, but it is a reference point. So what I do is I choose accurate settings on my display, on my TV, okay? And then I measure, I measure with my camera, with that app, what am I getting, okay? So that's not an accurate measurement, but what I do is I change the settings and then I try to keep that same green to magenta balance that I was getting with accurate settings, okay? With accurate out of the box settings. So I don't get a picture that looks very, very wrong. This is not accurate, but it works very well. I like the results a lot. So that's what I do. Accurate settings, use the color temperature meter app, see what I'm getting. I'm getting oh, 6650K, for example, the color temperature. And then I am getting green to magenta balance 0 0.003, okay? Then I lower the color temperature because I want to. I lower the color temperature. When I lower the blue, I see that I am, I am getting the green to magenta balance too much leaning towards green. Then I lower the green. And then I get like 6,000K color temperature, which is it's warmer, it's what I want. And then what I make sure with this 22 point calibration is that I keep a consistent color temperature and a, consi and a consistent magenta to green balance reading on my phone. So that reading is not accurate. I don't care. What I care is that it is consistent across the entire grayscale because it is very sensitive. So I touch, you see that I'm fine tuning this in one or two clicks. And the reason is when I touch this just a little bit, the, the app is able to tell me. It, it realizes the changes. So even if it's not accurate, it is definitely detecting any changes even if it is very, very small. So it definitely works somehow. So let me show you. 496, code value, blue, one. 469, code value, blue, two. 442, blue, four. 410, blue, six. 374, red and green to one, blue, six. So now from here, from 374, what I'm doing going down is I'm going to increase the visibility near black. That's why you're gonna start seeing me touching the red and the green. I'm going to increase the visibility near black for OLED Motion Pro. So you can see it here. Then 332, red and green to two. So you see we started our one, now two and the blue on seven. And the reason why I have to compensate the blue is because my LGC1, my TV, 
is dropping too much the color temperature in the lower end of the gray scale. So I have to increase the blue to keep that same color temperature um, reading across the entire gray scale. That's why. So then I have to keep on that. Uh, keep on that. 282, blue 7, red and green 3. Okay, so I'm increasing red and green. 218, blue 7, red and green 4. 135, blue 9, red and green 6. 48, blue 10, red and green 8. 15, blue 12, red and green 10. Okay? So remember, this is not accurate. This is on my TV. On your TV it might be slightly different. And I might try this calibration again and again and again. And I might get a slightly different uh, results. Okay? This is just something that I am doing because I know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for increasing the visibility near black and I definitely accomplished that okay a hundred percent it doesn't matter if it's accurate or not I can see better near black this looks perfect in my, in my opinion this looks like an SDR picture <laughs> it, it's fantastic and I am reducing um, I'm getting a warmer color, te color temperature because I like it okay I don't care about accuracy whatsoever I like that it is easier to my eyes and I enjoy that. That's why I did those changes. But it will be a lot easier for you. Just use this RTX middle gray slider, which works very well. And then just give it one click on the game. Just increase it in one click. And I do recommend you to keep that peak brightness at 400 and use dynamic tone mapping to get more, uh, more brightness. Okay. So that's it. Let me know uh, if you give this a try. Uh, also, you can just make it a lot easier for you. And instead of instead of use All Emotion Pro High, oh look, I have my I have to replace my battery. <laughs> I use this a lot. So you can make it a lot easier for you and just use All Emotion Pro Medium, for example. But I wouldn't do that because remember, All Emotion Pro Medium, it is like. 240 um, hertz, 240 FPS sample and hold, okay? Uh, but if I use All Emotion Pro High at 100 FPS, that's like 263. So I much rather get better motion clarity with a higher resolution, higher fidelity, and just lose a little bit of brightness and do this calibration, okay? I, I, it's, it's a no-brainer to me. I, I would definitely use High all the time for everything. I never use medium, but medium works and it is it definitely gonna make uh, everything easier. Um, so yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Uh, how are you liking this RTX HDR? I'm also going to make a separate video about RTX dynamic vibrance because some of you have uh, asked me and I have to test it more. Um, so I, I would leave that for a separate video. Uh, you can also, you know, instead of a hundred, you can do a little bit less and maybe use medium and, you know. This is just one example. My TV, my settings. Um, you, you know, give it a try and, you know, share your, your experience, share your, your settings. If you got something uh, different or even if you know something uh, better or something we can use to improve this, you know, using these color filters. For example, we have a lot more color filters. Maybe there is one that can help you accomplish the same thing um, or get a better picture. So let me know. Um, I'm all ears and let me know if you have any questions.